Good evening and welcome to DXB Today. Tonight we are galloping and trotting and racing into the episode because it's all about the race season. If the one thing that the UAE does well is celebrate racing, whether it's cars, whether it's camels or whether it's horses, we are the ones who are going to be telling you all about it tonight on tonight's show. So let's see what else is coming up. Khaled heads down to check out equine fitness facilities for horses at the Equinist Equestrian Center in Dubai. Amy checks out Medina Jumeirah to explore Art Dubai, the leading international art fair featuring a diverse lineup of over 90 galleries from over 40 different countries. Plus, talented singer Eleonora Barbaccini is joining us for a performance later tonight. So guys, I don't know if you've ever ridden a horse or went to horse riding. Is it something that you've done before or something that you maybe want to venture into? It's something I do on a regular basis. Is it, Lane? Oh, yes, wow. it is. You yes. are so random. I you say riding. that about everything. <laughs> what, you ride now? <laughs> it's like I ride camels, I, I paint, I, I sing, I cook. Do you cook. know what? I, that's one thing I've always wanted to do. I've never ridden a camel. Uh, but I, I ride horses, I play polo, and um, and I've done a little bit of dressage, not much. Oh, wow, nice. Not much, but I've... I've so I it. rode a horse recently in Hatta and had the most incredible uh, ride. How, what would you what would you refer to that? Oh, it depends what Little, you're doing with it. Okay, trotting? I was very... Yeah, I was very... Gallop, very gallop on a horse. Trotting. <laughs> <laughs> Not galloping, not yet. And that was lovely through the mountains. I will say I'm a little bit scarred because when I was in Egypt once, visiting the pyramids, a ho the horse that I was on took me to the very edge of a cliff and just stopped there and kept me there for five minutes before it reversed. Five minutes felt like five years, but I will never forget that. And it took me a long time to get back on a horse, but I'm proud to announce I have done it. Wow, congratulations. Get back on that. Fairly ride good. horses. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> well, um, we've got a lot to talk about horses, guys. And I think our guest co-host is going to educate us all quite a bit today. He does something really fascinating I can't wait to learn more about. Let's find out who it is. Hi, I'm David Robson from Equitrans Logistics and excited to be with you today. David will join us in a little bit, but first Khaled heads down to ensure that our four-legged friends are healthy and happy for life with Equinist, the home of fitness and rehabilitation for horses. Let's take a look. Hey everybody, I'm here at Equinus Center. Everything that you need to know about horses is all here. They take care of your horses when it comes to their well-being, fitness and rehabilitation. With over 25 services, they're the only ones in the Middle East and in Asia. I'm here with Dr. Salma who takes care of all the horses. Well, it's a pleasure being here today with you. And please tell us more about yourself and the facilities. Hi, I'm Dr. Salma, equine uh, sport medicine and rehabilitation veterinarian. Uh, I'm working here in the Equinist. Equinist is the home of fitness and rehabilitation. Uh, we provide a lot of service for, uh, for horses. Uh, one of them, uh, BMF. BMF, it's electromagnetic wave, which increase the, pl the blood supply to the muscles and so can increase the inflammation or any problem in the back or the tendon. Also, we have the shock wave. Shock wave, it's amazing for the tendon problems, which is uh, most common in horses, especially jumping horses. Uh, also, we have a multi-radius laser. Multi-radius laser is totally different from the normal laser. Uh, also, we have a spa. Spa is totally important uh, for the swelling and also for recovery after jumping. Also, we have a query and uh, we have a treadmill, dry treadmill and aqua treadmill, which has an, a great effect for the horses and the recovery for the jumping horses especially. So, what's so unique about this center compared to other centers around the world? Uh, actually, uh, our center here uh, provides a lot of service and uh, almost of service in one place. This point uh, is totally different because there is no places all over the world can provide a lot of service uh, and, and uh, like this service in one place. Have there been any challenges that you have faced when it comes to rehabilitation of the horses? I think the most important challenge that we face here in, uh, in, our, uh, in our place 
uh, because uh, we are treating with the most valuable horses that can uh, compete in international uh, and uh, multinational shows. So it's a big responsibility for us. So we have to be qualified enough and be responsible for this responsibility. Thank you, Dr. Summer. It's a pleasure being here with you today. You are welcome. I'm so happy for this interview and I hope to see you more and more. Well, I had a fabulous time here at the center where I got to learn a lot about the services provided for horses, especially when it comes to their well-being. So, of course, if you want to learn anything about horses and see what they do, come on down here to the center and check it out yourselves. Isn't it so fascinating how horses are just so looked after in this country? Wonderful. Now, our guest co-host for today is a veteran in the world of equestrian logistics meeting the growing demands of the local and international equine industry. With decades of experience under his belt, he has overseen some of the most several prestigious shows and events around the globe. Please welcome to the show and on the sofa, Mr. David Robson. How are you, sir? Thank you for having me, Elaine, and it's great to be here. It's a pleasure to see you. Now, this is a very busy season for you um, and your logistics company of bringing in so many different uh, varieties of our four-legged friends. Tell me, how does that work? Yes, yeah, so it's, it's a mix of different horses. You've got racing, polo, endurance, equestrian. Um, most of the horses basically move by air, so majority of what comes in and goes out moves by air. Um, and then we've got some of the GCC horses that move by road. And there are classes, right? I mean, yes. some, of this, <laughs> some of this transport can be um, Extravagant. I saw we're seeing some B-roll right now. So explain to us, what are some of the most exciting <laughs> aspects or least expected uh, aspects of, you know, uh, bringing a horse from one country to another? That's right, Dina. So you've got different classes as you have. So you've got economy, business and first like you do when you fly. And uh, generally what happens is horses go in a stall um, and that stall is basically literally like a box, a crate, metal crate that gets built up. You get three horses in it, and if you, that's economy. If you go two horses, it's business, and if you go one horse, it's first class. And then we have the very expensive passengers or horses that fly with us that need to get to a particular race on a certain day, certain time, and they'd go on a charter. So you may have five horses, six horses on a 777, Boeing 777, or an Airbus 300. Now, how is that usually determined, <laughs> the class of the horse? Is it by how, much, how wealthy their owner is, or is it based on how well they perform? So generally, I'd say most, most owners and most horses will try and keep them to traveling in economy if it's the general run of the mill horse. But if you get a horse that's probably competing in the Dubai World Cup or a horse coming for the long jeans nation show jumping that we had, if they're more expensive, they'll be traveling in a business class, which is more space, um, more ventilation for them. So they travel better, their legs don't swell up so much. They don't retain so much of fluids. And then if you're going first class, that's if you really want to spoil your runner. And he's probably going either for Kentucky Derby or Melbourne Cup. You travel one horse in a store. So this is the horse transport thing that you were talking about earlier. Um, how much does it cost to ship a horse? Like I can see that there's three different compartments. I don't know if you guys can see it over here. And you said that's for economy. That's right. And then two are for business class. But how much does it cost actually to to ship a horse? So generally, Ahmed, I'd say, if you're having a horse go from here to the UK, yeah. in economy, you're looking at about 30 odd thousand dirhams. Okay. Yeah, that's including everything. So that's including all the health and veterinary, all the blood tests, quarantine, and then delivery door to door in a way, or stable to stable, as we call it. And is there someone with them in, in let's say, in the in the plane? That's a very sure good question, everyone, yeah. Ahmed. Very Do good they question. get massaged? We want to know. <laughs> yeah. And what's the, what's the meals like? You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I, I'd say it's an, another interesting question. So coming back to Ahmed first, I would say most of all the horses will have attendants, as we call them, a grooms, yeah. flying grooms that fly with them. We're, we're seeing that on screen right now, which is interesting. Yeah, so they, they are boys who've been flying about 20 years. They've got good experience with horses. Uh, they can treat a horse. We normally have a vet on board if you've got over 30 horses. And then coming back to your question, Lane, it's, um, it's more the fact of, um, in terms of feed, we keep it simple to forage as hay. 
The reason being is if you put a horse in a crate like that for seven hours, or if it's going 18 hours to America, the horse is not moving. So what happens is his bowels are not moving either. So you want to keep whatever feed that goes into him to the basics so that they don't end up with complications like colic, you know? So, yeah. So when it comes to food, it's the basics, really. <laughs> the, little, n n n the little things you have to think about. No, yes. not, n nothing is uh, Everything uh, needs too to be much information of. on this episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wanted to know how many horses have you shipped from the start? Until up until now, if you can just give us a number. Yeah, sure. So over the 20 years, we've yeah. probably crossed 50,000 horses. 50,000. Yeah. Wow. So 50,000 horses, and majority of them would be by air. David, come on, tell us the most memorable story. Your clients will never hear this. Don't worry <laughs> about them. Just tell it. Just share it. The most challenging or the most whatever memorable? it is, something okay. that you'll never forget. I think the most memorable is um, the late Her Majesty's Platinum Jubilee, which we did at Windsor. So we had about 150 horses, which was the Middle East contingent that moved from Oman, Bahrain and the UAE to Windsor and back. And there was a mix of horses. There was a mix of endurance horses, a mix of uh, equestrian show jumping horses. And then you had some of the other musical rides. So um, what comes out of Oman is more the musical ride, which has it's about 70 plus horses. And they go on to put this huge mu musical display for Her Majesty the Queen, the late Queen. And that, that was, I'd say, one of the most memorable because even though she wasn't keeping very well, she still turned up and she loved just going up. Big smile on her face. And she had Tom Cruise there as well for the event. So that was the most memorable, I'd say. Well, she was riding up to a very late age. She, she loved to ride and, and it was a wonderful thing. So do you think the rise in your company um, shipping so many more horses was from that experience? I'd say largely, I'd say with the Maktoum family as a whole, yeah. you know, there's been a great prominence, especially from Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, um, with racing, you know, Godolphin, and then racing that happens in and around here and in the UK. So there's a huge influence from England with the racing industry here, back and forth, a lot of English trainers. Um, so that's grown, I'd say the industry here has grown uh, you're looking at 7,000 horses in and out of the country, just the UAE as a whole. Well, David, <laughs> some very fascinating and unexpected insight today. A great way to start off the show. You're going to be our guest co-host, so stay right there. We're going to need you. your input all throughout this episode. But for now, um, we're going to take a little break. And after this, we meet the founder of the first female-only camel racing team. Plus, we're reshaping equestrian brands in the region with Dark Horse Communications up next. Stay with us.